Hi, I am Dr. Atul Chetai. I head the Molecular Diagnostics Division at Dr. Lal Path Labs. Uh, and today I am going to speak about non-invasive prenatal testing or maternal blood for fetal DNA as it is commonly known. So if you look at the prevalence of these chromosomal abnormalities in fetuses, uh, they account for around 6 to 11 percent of the all stillbirths and the neonatal deaths. Uh, chromosome uh, abnormalities occur in uh, one in every 160 live births. So it's a major problem. So if you look at uh, historically uh, immunosynthesis, which was uh, which is an invasive procedure, uh, by the 80s it was the method of choice uh, to uh, detect these aneuploidies. But it is an invasive pr uh, procedure, and uh, the procedure itself uh, has a certain amount of risk. By the 90s, uh, these triple screens uh, which involved taking the sample from the mother and then subjecting it to certain biochemical par uh, parameters uh, and then uh, elucidating by the, uh, uh, the risk by use of a software became pop uh, popular. Uh, and uh, by the uh, year 2000, first trimester screen was the method of choice. But it is still a screening method. It doesn't give you definite answers as opposed to immunosynthesis, which is a diagnostic test. Somewhere in between, uh, there was an unmet need uh, wherein uh, we could have a screening test which, had, which was much more reliable and therefore uh, a test such as non-invasive prenatal testing or MBFD came into existence. So at one end of the spectrum, what we have is screening tests such as the serum screen, uh, which are non-invasive but don't give you definite answers and at the other end of the spectrum what you have is definite answers but then there is an inherent uh, risk associated with it uh, tests such as immunosynthesis and chronic villus sampling so mbfd is somewhere in between uh, which is a non-invasive test but offers you a sensitivity and specificity or, uh, or that of a invasive test so uh, where is this DNA which we are trying to detect in the maternal uh, blood coming from? Uh, what we are trying to do is to look for this fetal DNA in maternal plasma. Uh, this has a very uh, short, uh, very short half-life inside uh, the maternal plasma. This is reliably detected seven plus weeks of gestation, but clinically, what it is said, uh, said that uh, to be doubly sure. Uh, let us do a test only after 10 weeks of gestation. This DNA dis disappears very soon after childbirth. You could do, do a, uh, at no stage are we trying to distinguish uh, and separating out the maternal chromosome and the fetal uh, chromosome. So for example, if you want to look at trisomy 21, a test such as MBFD is measuring the ratio of chromosome number 21 sequence versus the control chromosome sequence and uh, by this way we are including or excluding out chromosome number 21 trisomy. So let us consider two scenarios. Uh, one is a normal scenario wherein the fetus has two copies of chromosome number 21 and on the other hand we have scenario 2 in which uh, there is a trisomy 21. So, uh, let us assume that 95% of the uh, DNA is that of the maternal origin and only 5% is actually coming from the fetus. So we all know that everybody uh, has two copies uh, of a particular chromosome in question. So if you are trying to see the, uh, the copies of uh, chromosome number 21, so 95 into 2, 190 will be coming from the mother. And because uh, the fetus is also normal, so 5% per which is uh, the DNA which is of the fetal origin multiplied by 2, so 10 copies are coming from uh, the fetus. So there will be around 200 copies of chromosome number uh, 21 in a normal uh, case. In scenario 2, again because 95% is coming from uh, the mother so 95 into 2 190 copies are coming from the mother but in this case what is happening is that there are three copies of chromosome number 21 so 3 into 5 a total of 15 copies of chromosome number 21 will be there 
so if you uh, add them together there will be 205 copies of chromosome tw- uh, 21 now so the art lies in distinguishing these 205 copies in a trisomy case as opposed to 200 copies in a normal case and a lot of statistics now goes into it and uh, it's basically prediction of uh, aneuploidies in the fetus uh, now in this case example what we have assumed is that 5% is actually coming from the fetus what if it is 4% what if it is 20% so the more the percentage of the uh, cells uh, of the DNA which is coming from the fetus the more is the reliability of the test because the expected ratio goes up uh, clinically for reporting uh, uh, literature suggests that anything with above 4% is okay to report but the reliability goes up as the fetal fraction goes up so their guidelines suggest that we have to mention uh, that okay this was the amount of uh, fetal DNA which was seen in the the particular case and current validation uh, strongly suggests that a test such as NIPT or MBFD can replace these conventional screening methods for Patau, Edwards or the Down syndromes. So earlier it was like we used to do maternal screen. In case a maternal screen is positive, then you go in for a test such as angiosynthesis. The uh, method of choice now is that if maternal screen is positive, then go in for MBFD. In case MBFD is also positive, then go in for angiosynthesis because MBFD still remains a screening test, it is not a diagnostic test, but in case it is uh, negative, then no further testing is required. 